The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. Fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the whole glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now have the reading of the word. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them asking or speaking in native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. 
Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he said, he showed them his hands and his side, Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, welcome to Pentecost. Today I'm going to begin with a story from a fellow priest. Now, his name was Chip, and he was six years old, but he had never learned to walk without crutches or some other help. He was born out of wedlock and had never been placed because it was felt that the attention he needed could not be given adequately in an adoptive family or even a foster home. So through his very short years, he had been moved from one institution to another and to another. The Lutheran Social Service Agency in New Jersey, they considered him one of their all-time favorites. They adored him. But the best that had come forward for Chip had left him far short of having a loving home. And then one day, a couple was looking through a catalog of children who had been classified as hard to place because of some kind of infirmity or something else. But nevertheless, they picked somebody. They picked Chip, and he was applied for. But when the social worker brought him to visit the family, he was way too frightened, and he refused to go up and into the house, and he sat down on the front steps, put his crutches beside him, and he stubbornly refused to move and just sat there staring at the street. Six years old, and it was just too much for him. And then the prospective mother and father of the house, they came out, they saw him, they sat down beside him, they coaxed him, and they bribed him inside, and they began to breathe on him the breath of love. Now, six months later, you'll see the scene, the same house, the same people, and the social worker was coming to visit to check up, to make sure everything was okay, and he had a surprise coming. Alone, they brought the social worker in, they sat him down in the living room, and they said, just wait. And then, alone and without any assistance, Chip came walking to him. Now, it was faltering, and it was slow and hesitant, but he did it all by himself. Chip presented himself with a huge smile. Who could have ever imagined this? Well, to be breathed on with the breath of love can sometimes be so overwhelming and so majestic that one's frailties are put to flight and all the resources of one's life can find free access to be able to do all that you can. 
Now, this is a true story, and it's just the kind of story I love to hear, and maybe you do too. The breath of love, healing, bringing hope, and bottom line, just loving. Now, our text today says that Jesus breathed on his followers his spirit. In our story today, It was the compassion and love of a family breathed upon a little boy that worked miracles. This can happen, and it does. And because it does, we would be wise both to recognize and accept the impact of the Pentecostal breath of God's Spirit on us and on the church throughout history. The creator of heaven and earth himself is the source of this Spirit. His breath was present at creation. The energy of his breath brought life into dust, and it was his person, his truth, that made the world happen. One evening, shortly after the crucifix, and Jesus was suddenly present in the room with the disciples and other followers. Christ, the Son, who had died for them, was present with them in their midst. And I'm wondering, just imagine their shock, and then their joy, their hope, and even their fearlessness have such a person arrive in the room with them is the truth of what happened. It was and should be understood as a gift of Christ's spirit. And then he gave him his breath, his spirit, and forever after that, the effect of his person would be present with them and with us throughout history. On Pentecost, the creator again breathed life into a new creation, into the church, us, It was another opportunity for humanity and God to coexist, to commune together. That fellowship, that relationship that our Father has always wanted with us was given a new opportunity so that now we had a new way into the presence of the Creator who had revealed himself in Christ. The presence of the Spirit of Christ in this text is connected with the church's role in the world. Its role is to be a protector, a supporter, an advocate, and a creator of justice. Being breathed on by Christ creates for us a life pattern that guides us to follow his teachings. On this Pentecostal Sunday, 2,000 years later, the Holy Spirit may not come as tongues of fire, but the Spirit is both present and wanting the same kind of transformation as the one that occurred 2,000 years ago. But this time, it is not a transformation among the disciples. It's among us. It's quite the expectation. If we let the Spirit in, the danger is we might become an incredibly good source, a source of good, of justice, of truth and beauty, and everything the Lord wants his creation to be. And we might have have to come up against some of the negative challenges in our world. It's not easy to ensure that the hungry are fed, the homeless housed, and the sick cared for, as we have seen this to be true, far too true, as we live through the COVID-19 crisis. But we do not need to do this alone, not by any means. We have each other, and more, we have the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is a feast for the whole church, a time to celebrate, to work together, to work to bring about God's creation right here amongst us. We can let the Holy Spirit in and we can join with the Spirit to make a reality of God's glory. So let us invite the Holy Spirit in. Let us pray. Where the Spirit is, there is creation and new life. Where the Spirit is, there is the living Christ. The Spirit is the breath of God's creative love so that whoever lives in the Spirit lives in the ever newness of God. Amen. Now, if you will please join us in singing our next hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
Let us confess our faith together as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the body of Christ, in the power of the Spirit, let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the people of God all over the world and in all worship traditions, for the readiness to be changed and made new, for a softening of the ground of our hearts to receive without fear, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of the earth to know you and honor your name, for the healing of the nations, and a new thirst for righteousness and purity at every level and in every aspect of society, for a dissatisfaction for all that distracts us from our true calling. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Church, for Bishops Andrew Aspel, Peter Fentney, Richla Walshaw, Kevin Robertson, and Jenny Anderson, the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Toronto, for St. Hilary's Church and Reverend Adrian, for the Bishops' Committee on Diversity, for St. James Aurelia and James Place Emergency Help Center, for St. John the Baptist Lakefield and its food bank, and for St. John the Baptist Norway and its participation in the East End Refugee Committee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the grace and power to live out our faith in the real and challenging world among those we meet and eat with those lives we share without compromising that calling to be the body of Christ, living God's integrity and purity, forgiveness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for those whose lives feel empty or cheated or filled with pain or worry or guilt. For all whose hopes and dreams are in tatters and all who are in any way imprisoned, we pray for our sisters and brothers here at St. Hilary's and in our community. Sam Benjamin, Joyce, Ron, Eunice, Betty, Francis, Cheryl, Gregory, Elveston. And we pray for all the frontline workers, the essential service workers who are caring for us in these times. We pray for all who are ill, isolated, and afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for those who walk the dark journey of death and all who have come through it into your presence. For mourners distressed by regrets or angry with God at their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all you have in store for us, we thank you. We look forward to walking into the future on your promise 
alive with your light. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. As our Savior taught us, let us pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Creator God, through the Holy Spirit, you create a new people chosen to speak, forgive, and give peace in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, help us to bless the world with your love. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with us in singing our final hymn, Spirit Divine Attend. the fire. 